Hello and uh, welcome back to another Fido Daily. Today we'll be having a look at Corky, uh, one of the best mid lane picks on patch 14.11. I'll be going through trade patterns, builds, uh, matchups, and pretty much everything you need to know uh, to pick up this champion and run away with the game. Now the rune page is pretty straightforward for Corky. Just grab Halo Blade, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, and Ultimate Hunter. And secondary, you pretty much always go Legend Alacrity cut down. Now the only other alternative is if you're versing a mage that can poke you, uh, consider swapping this for Absorb Life. And you can go Alacrity Absorb Life, or you can go Cut Down Absorb Life. Uh, both are fine, but just this rune is really, really effective at dealing with matchups like Syndra, Orianna. Uh, Victor, whatever, Huey, anything that will poke you, grab this rune and you should be sweet. And jumping straight into the game, uh, Corky, one of the best uh, level 1 champions in the game. Uh, the things that are very, very good level 1 are CC abilities. Unfortunately, Corky doesn't have CC, but what he does have is AoE. Okay, and AoE is broken level 1, and AoE Shred is something unique that no other champion has, right? So if you're just sitting there, Gatling Gun, 3, 4, 5 people level 1, they resist to getting shredded, your teammates are doing more damage, you're always going to win that. And uh, don't trust your teammates to buy Sweeper. Always grab Sweeper yourself. Uh, if you are going to invade, because you'll be able to get a cheeky ward like that, make sure you sweep kind of both of these bushes, the red bush and the bush below bread. One of those, uh, one of those will most likely be warded. You'll get the ward kill, you'll back away, and you'll be able to get level 2 off the first 6 creeps, which is absolutely massive for Corky, because that's really when your champion comes online. Yes, Corky is one of the best stat checkers level 1, but you don't have any extra move speed, alright? You don't have any gap closes level 1, so it's very hard to actually get your full duration of the Gatling going off and uh, get a successful trade, but once you have your Valkyrie, you can just W forward and force the trade, get the full E, get the 3 autos from Halo Blades, and... Uh, yeah, it gets solo kills in most cases, so... We see that Twitch actually did not start with any potions, that's what I saw. And if you don't start with potions, you're not playing lane. I think that's a bit too obvious of a roam mid, because if he goes bot lane, he takes one bad chunk and his lane's over, so he has no regen. Uh, so we're just going to be respecting the Twitch. Normally you would be playing very, very aggressive on this wave. You would be just e on Jace's face. You want to get your E-Trade uh, level 1, and then make sure that as soon as that 6th creep dies and you get level 2, uh, your E's back off cooldown. Uh, but just because we were a bit afraid of Twitch, we decided uh, to play it quite safe. We forced the trade onto Jace, because again, this was not a good trade. We're tanking his wave. Uh, you know, it looked okay for us, but it actually wasn't. Uh, we should have been a little bit more patient and just waited for our W, because now our W is uh, available, but our E was on cooldown, so we couldn't dash forward. But as soon as you got the two spells, right, you got W, you got E, all you have to do is just dash. Dash forward, you get your sudden impact uh, from the Valkyrie. Uh, you get your Halo Blades procced, and you win trades into pretty much every champion. I'd say the only champions you cannot stat check like this are uh, perhaps Yasuo, Irelia, um, or like maybe Malphite, you know, if they pick a Bruiser or a tank mid, Cassante, something like that. But any mage, um, any assassin as well. I think that's the biggest thing about Corky is you can actually just dash forward into assassins if you're level 3 to level 2 or level 2 to level 1 and absolutely destroy them um you know especially against things like uh talon or silas they might just opt into the 1v1 duel and you'll just out check them and, and they'll be very very surprised at how strong you are that's kind of uh, the big thing with this corky build right is that it's very very simple to execute you just press we right click you don't even need to cast your all you know you need to cast your, your your q most cases you can see there that i Teleport it into my lane instead of playing for the TP advantage because I'm anticipating that look, Jace is going to ward one of these sides and if he comes toward bot side, I'm already in the bush ready to cut him off, ready to get a free chunk and win my lane uh, because he has no TP. Uh, but instead we saw that Karthus was invading us so we just said okay, well instead of getting a, a Jace chunk, why don't we just get a, a cheeky double buff? Uh, we weren't able to quite skew the, the double buffs for ourselves, uh, but it's a really really nice uh, assist that we get. We win the jungle matchup single-handedly. And uh, that's that's probably the main reason why you should uh, TP for tempo, right? When people say TP for tempo, that's exactly what they mean. You're not TPing necessarily to get an extra minion, right? You're TPing to prevent the wave from crashing, number one. Number two, to prevent your laner from roaming, right? Because if you let him crash the wave, he gets a free roam off. And number three, you could also be TPing to protect your space, right? So there I TP'd to take the bot side of mid space and protect it, right? With my face, I'm, I'm in a position that he doesn't expect me to be. And uh, if somebody walks in and face checks you, that is the easiest way uh, to win a trade in League of Legends, right? Because you get all your abilities off before the other guy even reacts. Um, you know, whereas if mid lane, if you're dashing forward, you're tanking the wave, you're tanking Jace combo, whatever it is. So uh, there's many, many ways to use a TP effectively. 
and uh, just try to come up with creative solutions instead of just holding on to it and waiting for the for the perfect uh, TP angle because that might never never uh, actually come. And uh, yeah, we see that Blitzcrank is coming in. We're playing very, very respectfully. Notice how I wasn't forcing any trades until my Blitzcrank got there. I think that's a really crucial skill to have, is understanding, okay, uh, do I actually need to get my laner lower? Or will we be able to just overkill him with my teammate, you know? Um, because a lot of the time, if you actually force a trade there, if we force the trade on that Jace, when the wave was in a good position, when Blitzcrank was just coming out of base, the wave would just get auto pushed, right? Because we're tanking the wave, we're AoEing the wave, and the wave wouldn't be in a great spot. Sure, Jace might be lower HP, but we're actually going to hinder our ability to get that Jace kill by forcing a trade 1v1 instead of just waiting for our jungler or our support, whoever's coming, to come. We're back to landing, and uh, again, Jace has no flash, we know that. So once again, we see that our Kha'Zix is around mid. So when your jungler is around mid, if you're already winning and your opponent has no flash, you have two options. You can either dash forward and, and force a trade and not worry about where the enemy jungler is, because if the jungler comes out from here, your Kha'Zix can help you out. But if you don't think you can kill him, the better thing to do is actually stack a wave. You can see here, we're just stacking the mid wave and we might consider pinging our Kha'Zix to come mid and just dive this guy from full health, okay? Because if we can deny this entire wave, uh, he loses a lot and uh, kind of solo wins us the game. But our Kha'Zix decides to go for Rift, which is a-okay, totally fine. We can use our turn here to secure the Rift objective. Again, if the jungler contests him, we'll be able to help him out. Uh, but then we see that Karthus is bot lane, so we're just kind of playing for ourselves, right? We know that our jungle is not coming, their jungle is not coming, and uh, you know it's important that you don't actually commit yourself, commit your time to things that don't matter. If we walk bot lane here, we probably don't make it here in time. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen, um, and we're giving Jace the chance to cut us off back to mid lane. If we go to Rift Grubs again. What's the point of going to group Rift Grubs when Kha'Zix is already securing them, we know where the enemy jungler is, and it's a 1v0, okay? So if you have nothing to do, if you assess that both sides of the map are not, you know, are not worth your roam, just play for the 1v1. Play for the 1v1, and that means just getting free damage, conserving your HP. When you're playing for the 1v1, those are the only two things that matter. Free damage and conserving your HP. Denying CS is nice, but it's not that big of a deal, right? Because if you just play for the chunk on him and play to conserve your own health, over time... Uh, you'll just get you'll get to deny CS because he'll be too scared to walk forward. He's in kill range, whatever it is. But you can see how I'm very, very patient with my Valkyrie. I'm not using it randomly, right? I'm, I'm trying to really wait for a good angle where I can guarantee at least two or three auto attacks. Or if I can't get two or three auto attacks, I I'm at the very least going to be landing some ultimates um, to do some extra damage. And yeah, it's just about patience on Corky, not forcing things. You can see here, you know, I, I, I want to dash forward, but... It's not realistic, right? If I run at him, he's just going to run away. So I'm letting my teammates do the work. I'm just pinging. I'm letting them know, guys, uh, look, if you're interested, uh, there's, there's perhaps a free kill on Jace, come mid. But otherwise, I'm just playing for the plate. I'm playing for my own resources. I'm playing to conserve my health and uh, just constantly have priority in mid, basically. I think that's the best thing you can do on champions like Corky uh, without any CC. You know, you just play for the wave. Even here, you can see I'm considering helping Blitzcrank, but I'm not going to do it if it's going to chunk me, right? Because I know that once this play fizzles out, Jay still has like one one fifth uh, HP, right? And I have half HP. So if, if everybody just leaves mid lane eventually, I'm in a really, really good spot and I'm going to get the better base and I'm uh, basically winning, right? So um, I'm not forcing things. Again, once the play is over, I've killed the Karthus. I've deemed my resources too low. I'm not going to flip it against Jace, right? Because if I flip it against Jace, I die on this wave. Jace recalls. Or even if we trade one for one, or whatever the outcome is, the wave is bad, right? I'm immediately thinking about what do I want to do with the wave? And uh, if it looks bad, just don't force it. Just don't force it. Play to push the wave. Because by pushing this wave, what's going to happen? We're going to come back first. And we're going to be able to roam on the next wave. We're going to be able to secure an objective like a dragon on the next wave because we recalled first. So whoever recalls first mid lane has a huge advantage. Okay, so if the flip doesn't look likely, just get the better base. Okay, and obviously, you know, in this case, my teammate came and he helped he helped me out. So I canceled my base. It looked free. Great. But if their jungler came, I would not be in any danger, right? Because I've already shoved my wave. I've prioritized that. I'm over trying to get a solo kill, and uh, no matter what happens, no matter how my teammates react or their teammates react, I've already got the most out of the situation. Now, we're looking to base soon. Um, whenever you base on Corky, you can go for both Opportunity first or Collector first. It really just depends on your gold. Obviously, uh, don't buy Infinity Edge. That's a little bit troll. Uh, but yeah, just buy any lethality item you want here. I just saw that I could buy, you know, spend all of my gold if I bought Collector and Double Longsword. 
so it seems pretty optimal. And once you get one item on Corky, uh, you can go absolutely berserk mode. You know, you can be dashing him pretty much off cooldown. Uh, you don't have to worry so much about your health because you can actually just 100 to 0 someone. You know, with just opportunity or collector against a mage that doesn't buy a cloth arm and doesn't have any defensive stats, or in this case, a Jace that doesn't have any defensive stats, you can pretty much kill them from 4 to 0. Uh, from 100 to 0, as long as you get the three Halo Blades autos off, you get, you get you know, in that case I had a big one, a big rocket, you get a big rocket, three autos, it's done. Um, often don't even have to use your, your Q to get the kill. And that's it, I mean, you just get the kill, and uh, remember, we're just building a crap ton of AD. We've got 180 AD at 10 minutes, so we're taking these plates, you know, this tower is melting like butter. Uh, we're looking around the map, considering where is the enemy jungler, can we actually greed for the, for the next wave? We saw that Karthus is bot lane. So we're like, fantastic, we can grab another one even, and uh, yeah, just uh, the biggest thing I guess is when you're wave clearing or corky, just make sure you're not like kiting backwards, right? Because every time you kite backwards, you miss some some of your Gatling gun damage. So just kind of S key, stand still, try to make your Gatling gun hit everything you can. Yeah, we're just baiting, we saw that our Blitzcrank's behind us, we know that this guy will uh, dash on top of us uh, if we do stay in melee form. Uh, because he's really far behind and if he lets us recall, you know, we're gonna grab another BF sword potentially and then it's gonna be even more impossible for him to play. He ends up uh, face checking the bush, our jungler kills him. We have had a lot of help in mid lane, but we we have had um, mid prior as well, you know, so it's kind of like a... It's a two-way street, you know, it's not like we're, we're getting carried by our teammates. We're playing very well, uh, we're always staying on high resources mid. And there's always uh, a lot of volatility, and that's kind of how you want to play on Corky. You want to try and get your lane low, but not actually solo kill on themselves. You know, you don't, you don't need to get the solo kill, you just need to force them back, and then you'll take a bunch of plates. Or your teammates will come over, and they'll be able to set you up, right? Because you're not a champion with CC, and without CC, uh, it's it's a little bit unreliable to get kills. Again, one thing you can do on Corky is just skip boots. Um, don't buy boots at all, because there are no good op uh, boot options on Corky, unfortunately. Our Berserkers are okay. But I'd say for Berserkers to actually be a worthwhile purchase, you do need to have two crit items. So I think once you have Collector IE, you can consider getting Berserkers because your auto attacks do hurt. But since you have Halo Blades, you know, um, usually when you dash forward, people will die in three autos. And the extra attack speed from Zerkers doesn't really do too much. Swifties, again, doesn't really seem like the right item for Corky because you just dash forward and then stand still and auto people three times and hope they die. Merc Treads can be good. Merc Treads are probably the one exception. Uh, if you do play against double AP mid jungle, absolutely rush Merc Treads on Corky. Um, that's, that's a great item. Tabbies, I feel like Tabbies are a little bit more underwhelming this season. We're just trying to cheese Jace on the way back, but I think uh, the wave ended up seeing us, so he's, he's quite cautious um, off our cheese. But yeah, um, I, I think in general you just skip the skip the boots, especially if you do the opportunity build, right? Because opportunity gives you quite a bit of move speed on its own. So you can either get tier, tier 1 boots or just no boots at all on Corky and just build full damage, full one shot. And uh, you can see here, I'm just people are just melting to me, you know? And yeah, we just get away from the play. I get the double kill. And you can see there, I mean, the, the, the damage is just insane, right? We had three people engage on us, uh, and we, we managed to kite it out. I think the biggest key there was just uh, moving between abilities, right? Just doing one auto, one ability, movement. One auto, one ability, movement. Trying to cut your auto attacks with the ability usage, you know, that's that's the good thing about the rockets now. You, you don't think of your rockets as poke. Your rockets are kind of like DPS now, right? You want to just auto attack, rocket, auto attack, rocket, uh, to try and, you know, smoothen out the animations. And... Um, you don't have too many uh, too many charges, so I feel like Corky has kind of moved away from this poke champion into this assassin um, AD carry kind of thing, uh, kind of like a Samira. Uh, the way I think about Corky right now is kind of like Samira. You dash forward, you one shot someone, or you get one shot. That's that's about the name of the game. Um, but you do have great wave clear as well. That is one thing that hasn't changed about Corky. Your wave clear is fantastic, and you have a little bit of mixed damage, right? You have the W, uh, which which has been buffed a little bit. Uh, it's got an extra tick now. You have the Q that does magic damage. The rest of your kit is full, you know, lethality, full AD. And uh, it's also very, very easy to move uh, to plays in your jungle and in the enemy jungle on Corky because you have so much burst damage and you have uh, a dash, right? So you know, I feel like on this champion in solo queue specifically right now, you can, you can just pick up free kills everywhere. You don't actually need to worry about your lane matchup if you're playing against something um, a little bit challenging, like maybe a Nico. 
um, or in uh, you know Oriana with phase rush or Victor with phase rush maybe you can't necessarily dash forward because you'll get stunned or you'll get slowed on minion aggro and they'll phase rush away and you'll lose the trade or you'll get ganked you can not just play safe right you can not just play for 100 CS in 10 minutes and I guarantee you eventually you'll just find somebody with no flash in the jungle dash on them kill them and here we go again you know you've got that the two item spike on Corky you're killing killing the squishies in two shots and it's just a lot of fun to do I think uh, Corky right now is one of the best champions to abuse um, I know next patch 14.12 they are nerfing um, oh, uh, I think they're nerfing his E quite a bit they're nerfing his base damage and his E and they're improving his Q scaling they want him to uh, max Q again but I don't think that's realistically going to happen. I think people will still kind of go for this build. Maybe they'll, um, next patch, he won't go as much lethality. Maybe it'll just be sort of collector, i.e. Lord Doms, because Lord Doms is getting buffed. Who knows? But I think Corky is here to stay. The rework they did for him is fantastic. I think there's just so many build options. Um, it's a completely new playstyle. So I don't think this champion will die out anytime soon. And if you put time on him now, you know, uh, it's a great investment for your LP, for your ranked journey. Uh, it's easy to get p picked off on sidelines though there, you saw that, you know, I'm 8-1, and one. I'm the strongest person in, in the game, I'm probably four, 5,000 gold up on my laner, uh, but still, if somebody flanks you on Corky, you're, you're a very squishy champion, that's why I think Corky's in a healthy place, right, it's a little bit annoying when he gets ahead, but there's always a way back against Corky, because he just builds full glass cannon, right, and uh, if you miss position once, uh, you throw away your lead on Corky, you die instantly, and uh, suddenly, um, you know, you have to work very hard for the win, but... Yeah, don't get discouraged either on Corky. If you do die on side lanes, like it happens, just keep walking. Um, just know that you can, uh, all you have to do is press tab and just check, okay, can I kill both side laners here? I'm playing against Gragas or uh, Jace. They're both playing very squishy builds. It's not a bruiser. It's not a tank. I can absolutely lane into them. I can absolutely make progress. So just stick to side laning um, if you are ahead, if you feel like both side lane matchups are favorable for you. And uh, it kind of comes down to the same concept, like being patient with your E. Don't E forward to get a chunk, because if you get chunked, it's worse for you. Um, or if your W is on cooldown, you know, you might be missing out on plays like this. Like, this is great. Instead of wasting our resources, wasting our abilities. Uh, bot lane, we just kind of, we're very patient with it. We push the wave, and we got a free chunk of Gragas. We see that he's a little bit out of position. It's going to take him way longer to get this tower. So we're just going to commit and get a few autos off, see if anything happens. But it's kind of just about playing off your teammates, right? You just want to wait for somebody to actually come help you instead of trying to make hero plays on Corky, especially once you're ahead, right? Because you're very, very squishy, uh, but you do a lot of DPS. So as long as you're in the right position, you get a lot of things done. Jace here doesn't expect us to Valk. Flashes forward. A little bit interesting gameplay and... Yeah, we end up trading a bunch of kills, but it's good stuff for us because what's the most important thing? We've killed the wave, guys. We've killed the wave. We're farming, you know, more than 10 CS per minute almost. Actually, yeah, I think it, I think it is more, right? Because minions don't spawn until 130. So we're farming very, very well. Um, that's the great thing about Corky is you can just dash forward, uh, kill someone, uh, kill the wave, and if you die, you die. You just respawn and you do the same thing. It's a very, very fun playstyle that I think a lot of other champions don't allow you to do. I think even things like Akshan, Tristana, um, there's kind of a delay between when you jump forward and you kill someone. You know, Tristana, you need the four autos. On Akshan, you need a lot more than four autos. But on Corky, it's you just W, E, auto, R, auto. They're just dead in, in 0.5 seconds. And I don't know. It's something that I feel like is missing from the game. Champions like this, even assassins take multiple rotations to kill you nowadays. So I really enjoy this Corky playstyle. And yeah, I mean, uh, if there's an objective up and you have teleport, just head over to the other side. This is really bad though. Don't don't ever do jungle camps like I'm doing here. This is a not a good uh, not a good um, usage of your time because we can see that you know we could already be hitting this tower. And nobody could be attacking us because everybody's showing on the map. So you should only do jungle camps if you're unsure of where people are, right? Because you are a squishy champ, but if you can see everybody else on the map or you just saw people, you know that they can't be there, just make sure you're actually making progress on the towers. Because again, you are building full AD Corky. You have 340 AD. Uh, you're very, very strong. We've shoved the wave. What is the purpose of shoving this wave, guys? Is we bring somebody top lane. All right, we've brought somebody top lane. We immediately TP'd into the fight and we want to play a man advantage situation. Jace is matching our TP, but we TP'd in a very random position. He doesn't expect us to be here, and we're playing the Assassin Corky, the very satisfying Assassin Flank Corky. You can see both their carries just dead in one hit. Just just dead in two or three autos. Auto R auto, they're all just dead. Um, it's just so much fun to play. Uh, I don't think there's, there's been a champion in the recent times, outside of maybe Hui, um, 
before the nerfs. I mean, Huey still kind of one-shots people, but not quite like this. So, yeah, I mean, you just have so many options when you play Corky. You can flank TP, you can group with your team, play front to back. It sort of just depends what you're up against. In this game specifically, they don't have any tanks at all. It's just the Gragas. Everybody else is super squishy, so you can just kind of play like a backline, backline diver. Um, kind of like the old package Corky playstyle. But if, if you are playing against tanks, you know, things like Cassante, Zack, Volley, whatever it is, just change the way that you play, right? Don't do not do what I'm doing where I'm TP flanking. I kind of adapt on the fly. Just recognize, okay, uh, we have to play this front to back, so I'm going to come from the front. And once again, I'm pretty much never going mid um, outside of the first 15 minutes. Um, I would only ever go mid on Quirky if I can't win the side lane matchup. And just looking to make progress on the towers, right? You can kill the wave very, very quickly. And the other good thing about Quirky is you're non-committal, right? You can use your your big ultimate to pretty much one-shot a wave and still have all your spells to dash forward. Uh, unlike other champions, you know, like Tristana, if you E the wave, now your E's on a 15-second cooldown. You actually can't walk with it and threaten the enemy champion. And uh, yeah, we're just kind of playing off Fog of War here, seeing if anybody will walk in toward Baron, perhaps. And nobody bites. So we just go back to our lane. Now the most important thing, guys, is that we don't ever give up the waves, right? We can see that if Jace is going to take his wave, he's going to pay for his life, right? We're either going to get prior or we're going to get a kill. We're not going to allow Jace to get the wave for free. And uh, yeah, I mean, just constantly pressuring, constantly looking for kills on the side lanes, never over committing. You know, we see our teammate came, but we're not sure about where the enemy champions are. So we're not, you know, we're not being too overzealous. We're conserving our own bounty, conserving our streak. Uh, while applying as much pressure as possible. <laughs> Trying to bait for our Kha'Zix here, um, pretending like we recall, when in fact we have not recalled. And uh, again, this is the biggest thing, right? If we if we were here first, if we were showing ourselves, um, there's a good chance that we would have died to Twitch Gragas. Maybe our teammates clean up, maybe they don't but we would have died. And what does that mean? We're not gonna get this wave, we're not gonna get the tower. But because we actually played for ourselves, played very greedy, played out of vision, we did the damage, we got the double kill, and we're gonna get the objective and the wave. So I think that's the biggest shift in mentality that you need to take on Corky. In skirmishes and team fights, you need to enter very late, right? Um, because the later you enter, um, the less disruptive the enemy will be towards you. Uh, you'll just be able to uh, dash forward freely once some cooldowns are used. I do the most damage you can, and uh, we're not flipping the game, you know, we know that we have a lot of golds, uh, we've decided that, okay, at this point we have enough AD to warrant the attack speed, we've got 400 AD, so Zerka seems like a fine purchase here, I was thinking Merc Treads, but they have no CC, their only CC is Gragas Q slow, and uh, I mean Gragas E stun gets reduced by Merc Treads, but obviously not the cask. So I think it's it's pretty low value Mufchard's game, pretty low value Tabby's game, because again, Ezreal doesn't really auto attack, Twitch does, uh, but for one champion, probably not worth it. We go to the side lane, we see what's happening mid, we move our camera, it's just important that you F key a lot on Corky, right, so that you can be greedy for waves without hindering your teammates. If there was something that I thought I could make to, then maybe I can cut them off like this as they're running backwards. Um, I would go there, but otherwise it's just important once you have Baron, push two lanes, guys. If you push two lanes, regardless of whether they have five alive or three alive or however many, whether you get a pick or not, you'll still be able to make progress, right? Because there's two lanes that they have to defend. They can't just put five champions, have a tower, and uh, hold the wave, right, in, in, a, in a 5v5 scenario. So we've pushed our bot lane, we've drawn one person bot lane, immediately teleported topside. We're thinking, what is the easiest objective on this map to take? So obviously this tower, it's the hardest to defend because there are two points of attack. We can attack it from the jungle to threaten the flank, and we can also attack it the way that we're walking. And uh, Karthus oversteps here a little bit, decides to try and clear the wave. And that's another good thing is, uh, you know, if the opponent ever presses Zonyas, I think Corky is similar to Caitlyn, in the sense that if you put a Caitlyn trap down, you know, you insta-kill someone coming out of Zonyas, Corky can do the same thing with your Q ult. If you time it very well, you can make your Q and ult kind of hit at the same time. And that does a lot of burst damage, so uh, it's also very non-committal, right? You can stand very far away um, while doing a max range Q plus ulti combo. Um, that's another benefit of Corki against mages, against champions that will build Zonyas. You know, you're building full lethality, they're going to build Zonyas, but actually when they Zonyas, they're already going to come out of it and die. And yeah, we're just happy we're getting this tower. You know, you, we're not trying to overforce the base, right? That's the thing that I said. We need two waves pushing at the same time in order to make progress with Baron. 
And if we don't have that option, then we'll just recall, we'll spend our money, and we'll play for a fight around objectives. That's that's the way that you guys should think about objectives, right? Um, if a dragon is up, it is way better, even if this is not sold. Like you saw there, we only have two drakes. This drake doesn't necessarily win the game, but it gives us an opportunity to fight. It gives them a reason to come out of their base, and it's a lot easier to win the game when your opponent is not fighting you know, on high ground with, with a tower, with uh, limited entrances, and... Our teammates are doing a pretty good job cleaning up here. Uh, we end up walking mid because we see that something's happening. Uh, we might be able to get this tower finally, which is great. And uh, once again, we're just arriving late. All the threats are gone. All the cooldowns are gone. We can just freely dash forward, get the kills, pretty much one-shot people. Um, considering going for the end here, uh, just because I think we can one-shot the Ezreal. And uh, we do we do two-shot the Ezreal. Not quite the one-shot yet, but um, ult into auto would have killed him. Uh, very, very satisfying. I mean, it just seems a little bit silly, you know. It's just not something that's possible in other champs in League. And again, we're just looking for another cheese. These are great, you know. After you've taken him on Corky, dash over, E, auto, alt, auto. See you later. Uh, not meant to be, though. Twitch respecting it a little bit. Or at least a little bit aware of it. But, uh, yeah, this game is pretty much won. I think whenever you're in this position on Corky, uh, you've got some sort of a defensive item. You know, it's important that your last item... Or your, your, your fourth slot is a defensive item. In this case, we went for Shieldbo. Shieldbo did get buffed, which I think is a huge deal for Corky, right? Shieldbo no longer has lifesteal, but Corky doesn't really care too much about lifesteal because most of his damage comes... I'd say it's 50-50, like... Oh, maybe not 50, maybe like 40-60. Like, 40% 40 of your damage is abilities, 60% is autos. But in general, you're not really playing for sustain on Corky. You just either one-shot someone or they one-shot you. Um... Yeah, just again, there's nothing to do mid lane. We're not walking in because there is literally no structures to take. So even if we kill these people, unless we kill five people here, which looks like we will, uh, we can't really end the game. So I'm doing the smart thing and I'm just pushing the base. See that our teammates end up fighting, picking up a bunch of kills. We come from the flank once again. All the cooldowns are used, all the threats are gone. Quick one shot on Ezreal and uh, a nice closeout to this game. So all in all, I think Corky is a uh, must play champion on patch 14.11. If you have not tried them yet, please do. Um, I promise you that unlike Huey or other, you know, high skill cap champions, this, this champ only takes maybe five games. Five Corky games and you can do exactly what I'm doing in your games. Dash forward, get 20 kills and uh, yeah, you can you can make a lot of LP right now on 14.11, 14.12 by just playing Corky. So if you've got any more questions about builds, playstyles, matchups, anything like that, hop in my Discord and uh, ask away.